Hello and welcome to a brand new Two Tokens podcast. And today we're going to talk about tagging energy. These podcasts are part of the energy tokenization roundtable sessions, which are being hosted today at the Green Village of Delft. And it's basically an event in which experts, thought leaders, enthusiasts, startups, all kinds of people involved in the energy transition and tokenization are yeah, discussing these topics today and Creating the path of the future for energy tokenization. Well, in today's podcast, I'm talking with Leon Gerard van den Berg. <laughs> it sounds like a Dutch name, but you're not Dutch. Dutch by DNA. Yeah. Oh. So he's uh, you're the CEO <laughs> of uh, Sunified, and on the other hand, I've got uh, Killian Daly, uh, General Manager of uh, the Energy Tech Foundation. Uh-huh. Welcome to the group. Thanks um, for having me. You've been already a, some sort of friend, or no, not some sort of. You're already a friend of the podcast right you've been here a few yeah, times been here a few times yeah. with with yours and also with uh with uh, uh two tokens with yeah. riddle and code as well yeah so, uh, i mean uh, i know you obviously already uh, yeah. quite well but uh, yeah we're, we're co-located a little bit with uh katana as well yeah so you exactly. understand yeah, yeah so good. it's uh, but first i mean you're a new face uh, uh-huh. to me uh, killian uh, so welcome would Thank you you'd like to uh, tell us a bit more about yourself what it is you do with the energy tech foundation and uh, Sure. So yeah, I'm Killian. I'm the general manager at Energy Tag, and I've well, to a bit about myself. I, I'm I'm Irish, and I've been involved in the in the energy space since the beginning of my career, since my education. Indeed, it's just been something that has kind of possessed me, I suppose. Uh, so before joining uh, Energy Tag, I worked for a, a company called Air Liquide, which is a French uh-huh. industrial gas company. You see it uh, a lot in the in the southern, in the southern yeah, part of uh, yeah. the Netherlands. It's one of the biggest companies no one has ever heard of, you know. But it's it's kind of everywhere. And yeah. I was buying electricity there, and I was you know actually looking at how do we how do we go about decarbonizing this electricity? How do we approve our carbon accounting? Uh, and I just started to see some pretty fundamental flaws in that. Uh, when companies claim they're 100% renewable, it's misleading. It's not exactly what the consumer thinks. Uh, and a zero carbon account is not exactly what the world needs uh, today. Um, so energy tag, basically what we're working on is transforming how we tag energy um, so consumers really know exactly where their energy came from on an hourly basis. And this will allow things, you know, like uh, 24-7 tracking of electricity. Um, and when we say, hopefully one day in the future, when a company says, I am zero emissions, this truly means that there are zero emissions every hour of the year on their local grid. And that's kind of our vision for the for the future. And we're working with folks like Leon and, and many, many others around the world to kind of make this happen. UN Energy is a big supporter of ours, Google, Microsoft. We work a lot with the EPA, uh, the European Commission, uh, who I was talking to this morning about this topic. So yeah, we try to drive this whole ecosystem forward and, and help folks uh, you know, make it happen. Yeah, it's, it's such an important topic, which we will discuss uh, in a few, uh, few moments as well. For the viewers who haven't seen you earlier, Leon, would you quickly introduce yourself as well? Yeah, so uh, Sunified is, is a company that we created in Australia. Um, we uh, came up with a way of digitizing solar panels by putting a sensor, a Bluetooth sensor and a SIM sensor in the junction box of solar panels. We too want to tag and trace the energy coming from a solar panel. And we, we think that the uh, solar industry, renewables industry has a reporting and uh, opaque kind of uh, aggregation problem. People say that they can disaggregate information that is flowing from all these energy networks. And we we think that uh, there's some foundational truths that are missing. Uh, These truths, basically, we want to start to propagate uh, from the solar industry and then bring our technology stack from the solar industry into more renewables and into the smart grid. So we, we started the most simple engineering use case, how to digitize solar panels, a DC voltage coming off a solar panel, and then to aggregate that information uh, using a gateway. And this is part of what we do to, I guess, provide a checksum or a proof point. Uh, what has happened on the DC side of a solar network? Uh, it could be a commercial industrial, but we're starting first with utility scale solar. So we're, there's really two parts of, of Sunified. We have a tech stack and a sensor topology. And then we also are building our own solar parks in Australia to kind of eat our own dog food. Because the the only way to do this is to get your hands dirty. Uh, And uh, I'm sick of uh, think tanks. We're more into a do tank kind of mode. And that's why I find this exciting with uh, two tokens. It's about the practical application of this. What can happen this month, this quarter, this next half year? 
And that's what we're actually finding here is that we found our product market fit for the sensor and the tech stack. And now we're getting scale capital to, to make this possible. And so we, we're really a data oracle that runs on top of solar and renewables. Yeah. And then we, we let anyone with a blockchain idea or a solar digitization idea to use our data sets and then provide this utility for the life cycle of the asset. We want to track the asset from the factory to the paddock where it's installed, right through to it's being eventually decommissioned and then recycled. So uh, supply chain continuity and trust around supply chain, especially in the solar industry with China mm -hmm. having such a supply chain power and, and the misuse of some of that power as well in the channel. There are some great actors in the solar industry, but then there's uh, people selling substandard panels. And we, we also find that, that uh, people get caught with warranties that don't really perform. So yeah. we're, we're trying to provide, I guess, uh, five benefits on top of solar. And energy tag is one very important part of that. And while Killian talked about hourly proofs of solar, uh, we're doing 30 second witness proofs and then do, doing five minute reports. So we've immediately taken that frame, that criteria for energy tag and gone, well, we can go one deeper, right? One, really provide packetized energy 30 seconds at a time. And that's what Sunify does. Yeah, I agree. Hey, before we move on, I first want to ask your viewers, if you haven't subscribed yet, please feel free to subscribe to this <laughs> channel and also give this video a like if you haven't done so before. And also don't forget to hit the bell button so you're always the first to learn about all these new podcasts because there's so many exciting topics that will be uh, hosted on this channel regarding tokenization and today then energy tokenization. Uh, Killian, back to you mm -hmm. because... I mean, Leon is already going straight away with all the benefits that he gets from basically uh, the crypto anchor and, and, yeah. and, and, and the unified uh, or the unified chip that he created. But the energy, the, the tagging of energy, um, you already mentioned a few very important topics. It immediately comes to my mind mm -hmm. the greenwashing that is mm -hmm. that is being uh, yeah uh, fought back against with uh, the energy tech foundation. Can can you? Explain basically to the people in clear terms what it is exactly that you're doing and why it is so important that we start to do this, uh, yeah, have this Energy Tech Foundation. Sure. So I think um, to take a step back before we can explain some of the transparency issues with certification today, I think it's important just to, to, to realize that, first of all, uh, on a grid, with a lot of different production, uh, the electrons are electrons, uh, we can't tell the color of them. So we need a traceability mechanism above the grid, like an accounting system that basically says who put yeah. green energy in and then who is allowed to buy that claim and then make that claim to take it back out and say I'm green. Um, the way that is done today is basically using annual accounting methodologies and obviously with an electricity grid that needs to be balanced absolutely instantaneously, um, having annual accounting for a, a real-time system, it obviously leads to a number of issues. Uh, one way of describing it is that actually today, because we don't know ever the time uh, on one of these energy certificates or energy attribute certificates, what we call them around the world, there's no timestamp ever. So we never know exactly when that energy was produced, meaning that at three o'clock in the morning, I can claim that I've consumed solar energy produced uh, during the daytime without having stored that energy. And obviously that is, it's misleading. Basically it's not giving consumers the full picture uh, and this is happening wholesale. Um, and, it, and, and that's a, it's a big, big issue. So like the major issue we see is moving from annual accounting and bringing that accounting much closer to the physical realities of the grid. We call it hourly accounting. Uh, so that, you know, if I wanna say I'm green at 3 a.m., Fine, I can do it from solar as long as I've stored that energy in a battery, for example, from the daytime. Then that's what the system needs and that should be allowed. Uh, and of course, we could go to much smaller timescales, as mentioned by Leon. We use hourly as a kind of a proxy because already going from a year to an hour, yeah. I think it's a, it's a, a great big first step. step right? <laughs> yeah. But like, obviously, it should actually go to the market settlement period. So in Australia, that should be five minutes. And that's yeah. fantastic. That's that, you yeah. know, and maybe in, then further, further down in time, right? Like, well, 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 battery arbitrage, uh, right, uh, is done in... Uh, sub-second yeah. kind of uh, mechanisms yeah. as well. Yeah. So uh, we, we can't really perform on that. That's not our design brief right now, but five minutes is really doable. And we mm -hmm. think that, you know, three seconds to five seconds will be possible as well. So um, we really think it's compelling, the offer that Energy Tag does. And plus they're thinking digital native, right? Like the, the, the real 
thesis of Energy Tag is to is create this digital ecosystem, whereas uh, I see a lot of these reporting uh, certificates and, and inventories of credits that have been used uh, and mistreated, right, to say, OK, I'm going to backwash all of my uh, carbon footprint, uh, you know, with with rainforest credits based on energy for energy uh, carbon footprint. So we, we, we think that there's a mismatch, uh, a misuse of these credits as well. And I think a lot of it, just to maybe bounce in on that, but like a lot of it actually comes from the fact that, you know, these certification systems, like a guarantee of origin in Europe, which is, you know, basically tracks now over 25% of the EU's electricity. So these are, you know, very large systems, right? Like everyone who has a green tariff at home, my parents in Ireland, it's guarantees of origin that are being, you know, basically used to make yeah. that claim to, to consumers. Uh, that was set up over 20 years ago. I think having it on an annual basis wasn't necessarily bad back then. They didn't have the data to do something more granular. And, and to have the mechanism in place in the first place is absolutely essential because otherwise there's no choice for consumers, which I think is the worst of all worlds. So we have to realize that the system itself, is an, it's not a problem in, in and of itself. It's more, I, I think at this point now where we move towards the question of how do we totally decarbonize grids, it's just not fit for purpose anymore. It probably was 20 years ago to get things kickstarted when there was low renewable exactly, penetrations. Yeah. Um, so we have to be, you know, careful of that as well. But now, like everything in the world, right, we need to innovate and we need to move forward. Um, and that's what Energy Tag is really about. I think it's really the, the lack of transparency is also really hurting uh, the, the energy transition in mm -hmm. energy transition in a way that, for example, we've done a, a green bond, and the first kind of criticism that I got is, yeah, everybody's just greenwashing it. How mm -hmm. can you prove it's really a green bond? And yeah. we could prove it because we could show yeah. the uh -huh. assets. Uh, we're green. Eh? We've got solar assets, and we, yeah, yeah, we yeah, could yeah, show. Yeah. But still, I mean, we 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 lack a way of proving it decentralized. And that's a way where uh, you come in with with, with, with Cinefied. But the importance of energy tagging is, mm -hmm. in my opinion, it's, it's, it's very straightforward. Uh, I'm just curious to learn from your perspective, how are you going to do it? Like, how, how is this taking, how is this working, like energy tagging? Sure. So uh, Energy Tag, first of all, we're bringing together all of the folks working on this. And we're yeah. basically, what we did was um, propose the first global standard for energy tagging at an hourly level and we published that in in april um, april, april this year yeah just april this year wow. right so that has the support of i think about over 120 organizations around the world who are actually working on this so we're work we're, we're coordinating all of that right like all the folks actually going out and doing this in the real world and um, basically how it works it's you know it's this let's say let's call it a digital twin of, of the electricity system um, that is always knowing um this unit, this wind turbine, uh, between one and two o'clock on a, on a Tuesday in January, produced this amount of energy. That goes onto the ledger uh, as a production, uh, and that becomes a type of um, certificate or energy credit. And that can then be purchased by consumers who want to make a claim of consumption within that same hourly period. And it's just an accounting system at the end of the day, right? And there's nothing that too retired and taken out of inventory. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. To ensure that there's no double counting, which is, a, a, you know, obviously if there's an asset, let's say a wind turbine that is generating one certificate for customer A and another one on another system for customer B and then another one for customer C on, an, on a third system, that's, you know, triple counting of electricity and it's fraudulent and it can't be allowed. So that like fundamental basis of all of these tracking systems, number one rule is never double count. Never give a consumer uh, one bit of energy and then and then allow another claim the same unit of energy underlying. So, so like that's it's also providing the resolution of the asset register as well, uh, right? So uh, so that can't be cheated. So yeah. in in Australia for for consumer based solar yeah. panels, those those credits are given up front when you install a solar panel on your roof. Those are called STCs, mm. and those are really mm. deemed credits on the capacity yeah. of the solar panel. Let's say a 400 watt panel. And they, they say, okay, we're going to bring forward those carbon credits for 25 years, and now you get that as a benefit for installing now. Whereas large-scale projects, those are called LGCs, and they're paid out every 30 to 90 days. Mm -hmm. so, so there's really um, different time horizons uh, and resolution uh, of those things. Yeah. The, the consumer solar panels are based on this nameplate capacity of the solar panel, 
where, where there's kind of a loose accounting on that as well, because yeah. who knows what, what that panel is actually going to provide over its 25 year lifetime. Yeah. They really have brought that accounting period forward, right? Like a discounted cash flow, yeah, yeah. right? And they say, yeah. this is the assumption. There's also problems where people have double installed fake panels and got the yeah. credits and then, you know, Phoenix, the company and ran away with the carbon credits as well, or not paid a proper VAT tax on credits as well as well. So there's, there's a chance for fraud in the industry that we see that we need to tighten and provide this continuity of the asset register. Yeah. And then what happens with that asset when it's deployed in the field? You know, and what is the resolution that, that then you can point to behind the meter mm -hmm. and then at the meter? So, mm -hmm. so it's really providing that, that resolution. And again, we, we call it the Oracle problem in blockchains. It's gar if you have garbage in, a blockchain doesn't yeah. help you no, to no, solve no. garbage. Yeah. Out, right? <laughs> it, it, just proves, it, it just proves it's garbage. Yeah, it just, yeah, it just accelerates it. Yeah, exactly. exactly so, yeah. so we're trying to be this kind of data fidelity on uh -huh. top of solar. Uh -huh. We're starting with solar, but, but then when you get into the AC side of the in industry, AC networks run on three-phase power. You, those are cosine waves and sine waves three three times o over the network and those things are phase locked with atomic clocks so you everything has to happen you know with that kind of atomic clock resolution that's actually the time synchronicity yeah, of this yeah, industry yeah, so yeah, yeah. so there is the when we start to deal with the ac side of the network where everything is is accounted for then it really really starts to get into f some very fine resolution and the engineering problem for providing that telemetry is is the really complex problem we're trying to provide that abstract layer, like energy tag, mm -hmm. for for providing those proofs, that that trust layer as well as an economic layer. But so, from my understanding, uh, you need to be a member of Energy Tech Foundation in order to prove on an hourly basis that your energy is green, for example. So you mentioned that you've already got partners mm -hmm. like Google, and mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. mentioned another, a few, a few other Microsoft, Microsoft, Microsoft so, Iberdrola, so, a lot of big and also, utilities. So do you need to be a member in order to, to be able to prove that? And also you need as a power producer be a member of Energy Tech Foundation or how does it exactly work? Because I'm also curious to learn mm -hmm. like how you then tag it, because are you already using blockchain or? So basically just to maybe explain how, how Energy Tech actually works. First of all, any it's an open open door policy anyone uh, can sign up there's no fee uh, it's an open mailing list you can join any of our working groups um, and we think that's really important to bring everyone on board and not to have barrier to entry however if you want to actually claim that i'm issuing an hourly energy certificate in compliance with energy tag standard then you would have to go through like a, a basically a protocol assessment or checking process to make sure that you're actually doing what you say you do and this is it's a producer. Uh, as a as a producer, yes, as a producer, exactly. Um, we're starting auditing um, in uh, actually next month. <laughs> uh, the standard was released about six months back, yeah. um, and we think it's a really important part of building trust to make sure that folks are kind of you know at least at a, at the most fundamental level, not double counting, actually issuing certificates that are a sixty minute basis or less. Uh, if we can't prove to ourselves. Uh, that we're actually starting to harmonize and do things in a proper way. We're going to have a lot of trouble proving to other people, to the consumer, to governments, that what we're doing is actually trustworthy. Because as you said, you know, I think it was a really interesting point earlier, and it's pr kind of the crux of it all. Uh, you know, in a way, what we're doing, it's the... Uh, it's where the consumer comes in contact with the energy transition, where they can actually make that choice at home to buy green energy and if that is not transparent if that's flawed if that's misleading them if it's just marketing if it's just marketing yeah. Yeah. then they're gonna say oh, this is yet a, again a, more yeah. and then they'll yeah. just maybe you know have a fundamental turn against the energy transition itself which i think would be disastrous yeah. so you know just to be clear like energy tech is a very open organization in terms of Anyone can join. Anyone can 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 sign on to our calls uh, and contribute. Uh, anyone can write to me and say they don't they like this, they don't like that. Um, but then, obviously, if you want to make a claim saying yes, we're aligned with this standard, then we do a, a basically a type of an audit to check that your systems are actually doing what they say they do. But also, then you you can't, for example, sell uh, GVOs uh, or uh, uh, mm -hmm. currencies of origin GOOs in English. Uh -huh. um, towards another entity, for example, because there are, there are multiple entities uh, trading those uh -huh. those uh, certificates. Uh -huh. if, if you do it, for example, with Energy Tech Foundation, you can only 
then sell it or not, you're not really selling it or using it via energy degradation or how do you how do you account so, for those so double? tell us the work case that Suriki yeah. is doing then exactly I was just going to come to this so like yeah. obviously you know first of all uh, the chairman of energy tag is a guy uh, called Phil Moody uh, who set up the guarantee of origin system uh, about 20 years ago and then he, he, he basically ran and administered that as part of the thing called the association of issuing bodies which is all of the European issuing bodies for guarantees of origin uh, he, he ran that for 20 years and he's come to energy tag uh, since he left the AIB right CERTIQ which is the issuing body here in the Netherlands for guarantee of origin they're you know one of the most uh, innovative and pushy of all of the issuing bodies in Europe and they've been working on a project here in the Netherlands um, along with Google Microsoft and a company called FlexiDAO uh, who are doing the hourly tracking part uh, because actually the guarantee of origin is the only legal way in Europe that you can sell or claim green uh, green and green electricity so that's the legal system however the legal system is not time stamped and it has a megawatt hour certificate so it's basically Big by design t-shirts. it's by design a bit yeah. out of date right and um, so what energy tag does we in our standard of a lot of work and thought got into this is how you take a guarantee of origin and basically cut it up in time yeah, yeah? you can it's split it up GCs. in time yeah. into granular yeah. energy certificates yeah. but always making sure that the guarantee of origin is linked to those granular certificates that are issued because we don't want guarantees of origin going to Google and granular certificates going to Microsoft from the same unit of energy. That's double counting and that would be yeah. fraudulent, basically. Yeah. So FlexiDAO have a great platform. Yeah. They're tokenizing it with yes. their platform. So they, they've also worked with Energy Web and other yeah. ecosystems. Yeah. So they, they, they've really championed this, this process. Well, FlexiDAO um, aren't working with two tokens. We still can leverage their learning and this is an open API and documentation experience with, with Energy Tag as well. So we're trying to to provide this harmonization across mm. the ecosystem and uh, there'll be horses for courses as far as we're concerned where, where this will work for industry where it will work for commercial industrial where yeah. it will work for large-scale yeah. uh, generators mm -hmm. um, and then for eventually consumers right if I want to be a consumer and uh, download an app and manage my daily foot carbon footprint, yeah. there'll be apps for that as well. And we want mm -hmm. to have those granular certificates. Yeah. You couldn't really do that at a megawatt certificate, right? We need no, to deal sure, with no, uh, kilowatts <laughs> and watts, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, so when yeah, we start yeah, to say, yeah, well, what's yeah, the resolution yeah, yeah, yeah. of that? And how can you make sure local for local, right? I want to buy the green energy certificate from this local solar park on the, on yeah. the, on the green village car park. Right. If I'm a student here, that's that's where I want to uh, contribute my activities. So that local for local discussion, mm -hmm. which will be another kind of work working table here at, at the round tables, is really important because if you always have to go to a centralized authority to adjudicate everything, mm -hmm. yes, we understand the, the the logic of a regulatory carbon market. Mm -hmm. The consumption doesn't have to always be from a centralized inventory; it could be from a decentralized inventory as well. So we, we want to provide that, that capability. So certainly CERTIQ are the adjudicator of all of this in the Netherlands, but there's mm -hmm. other marketplaces that will allow decentralized inventory yeah. of yeah. carbon credits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so basically, I mean, the Energy Tech Foundation is building upon the, the TVO, the GOO framework, and then creating that granular, how do you call it? Very granular? much granular certificates, we call them. That, yeah. I think it's becoming a new term, right? Uh, so. I hope so. <laughs> Everyone sign up straight away. Um, yeah, so we're obviously, you know, taking all the good parts uh, of the guarantee of origin and adding you know correcting some of the fundamental flaws of the guarantee of origin yeah because basically to me it hears like it sounds like it's just basically inherent being designed for big uh, just, just on a very high level mm -hmm. of seeing okay that's uh, we, we measured on a yearly basis with megawatt yeah. hours, so yeah. like very large uh, basically uh, data pieces uh, yes. and then yeah. it's totally not uh, coherent for smaller users and you're basically what you're tying is to you, uh, you you already mentioned is being built like 20 years ago already and it's, it's time for a, a, I have for a sure, remake you know, time I think, for an update uh, time, yeah, sure. yeah. definitely time for an update I, I think we're, we're really clear on that and we hope that that would eventually fall you know follow back through to European legislation which hopefully will change and allow for these more granular certificates that open up these smaller markets but we're right? also trying to harmonize across North America Asia That's Pac right. Australia That's so right. so there are other customers in uh, in uh, Australia and other yeah. platform providers so NOC is a platform provider in Australia that's working with the University of Sydney 
on an energy tag uh, yeah. demo. Yeah. Sunified is working with IBM with their Hyperledger yep. database to make mm -hmm. a demo for, mm -hmm. for energy tag for, for IBM and their platforms. Mm -hmm. So IBM is really facing not consumers, but more the, the industry, right? For orchestration of energy sure. and for doing that. Yeah. And, and perhaps you could have an energy credit you know, based on, on uh, EV charging. So if you would change someone's behavior to charge EV with green <laughs> energy, then they're, they're actually creating a megawatt, right? There's the the, yep. brown, the energy that they did not pr consume in the evening, that was brown energy. So there's all sorts of ways that new layers and new incentives mm -hmm. for green energy consumption can be orchestrated and, and formulated. So we're unbundling this capital stack of, of green energy c credits and we're providing a brand new way to do it digitally. So it's all what uh, the founder of Netscape said, right? The advantage is to yeah. unbundle and rebundle, right? Uh, it's it's providing these new new framing for for facing a customer and giving that truth and confidence that 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 yeah, something sure. real something real happened when I, when I bought this this certificate. And I think that's one of the you know you touched on something really interesting there with EVs. Uh, and I, I to give another example uh, from a topic I've spent a lot of my last five years working on is uh, is hydrogen. Yeah. Uh, so. I used to work for one of Europe's largest, uh, largest hydrogen producers. Uh, so we all, uh, I'm sure a lot of people with any form of interest in energy have heard about green hydrogen. Um, and this, this kind of is one of my pet peeves. Um, green hydrogen is only green if the electricity going into the electrolyzer is green. Uh, okay. This is Full a done. really, <laughs> really fundamental point. Um, but people almost wholesale say if it's coming from electricity, then it's green. It's not. Uh, and actually, there's a really interesting study about to come out from the US um, on this topic. And there's been studies as well from the Florence School of Regulation here in Europe. Uh, it's a very hot regulatory topic at the moment. And, and it's absolutely crucial that when we talk about green hydrogen, it has to be green electricity locally. Produced. And every um, hour. Otherwise, what we will do is build, you know, uh, and the EU targets would require a whole France 500 terawatt hours more electricity to be um, put onto the system just for hydrogen production. And if we run those electrolyzers all the time, including during those hours of very high gas penetration, it's actually in almost all cases going to be worse than grey hydrogen. So green hydrogen could have more emissions than grey hydrogen if we don't use granular certification, if we don't use hourly tracking. So the consequences of this actually can be uh, massive at a system level. So we see green electrons becoming green molecules and, and you can't swap yeah. can't swap this or commingle it in, in the downtime when you don't have solar and you don't have yeah. wind. Uh, 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 so Australia is a great location where they're actually building these mm -hmm. huge uh, ammonia hydrogen yeah. complexes. Yeah. So yeah. 27 gigawatts uh, CWP renewables in the in the Pilbara in Western Australia are uh -huh. doing this, uh -huh. Uh -huh. but they they've not looked at green certification. They've only now started to look at this. Uh, we're we're in front of some of the decision makers uh -huh. on how yeah. to do the accounting for this. But of course, their customers are green steel producers uh -huh. that want to buy green ammonia from Australia and uh -huh. and ship it to to Japan for uh, smelting green steel. So they want to make sure the ingredients are sound, that we have continuity of that asset class. We, we call it our treasury. The electrons become our treasury, mm -hmm. and we really provide that, f uh, that finality, just like a pay wave card. Every, yeah. every 30 seconds, that's the kind of transaction proof that this, yeah. Is, yeah. this is green energy. They all aggregate. Blockchain math is pretty perfect. But of course, there's losses behind the network on all that. So there's, uh, there's an accounting principle called demurrage. When, when you have losses behind the DC side of the network going through the inverters, we can calculate all that and run a machine learning algorithm to tune that and make sure that the system is in balance, we know what's happening, mm -hmm. and the checksum is really the smart meter boundary. So we, we can provide all those proof points along the way and give great confidence that those electrons, the ingredients, the green hydrogen are sound and that the proof points are there, right? That, that they're actually buying the, the right stuff. Uh, and but the, and it's, it's so good to hear that. And it's yeah. absolutely crucial because if we don't get this right, we're going to be calling green hydrogen uh, something that's actually exactly. worse than today. Uh, really just do nothing if you're not making sure it's really, really green. And, and these are the consequences of, and the, I think the importance of, well, I would like to think that's why we're in this field, right? Uh, of what we're doing. It's to make sure that green products in the future really 
mean decarbonization? So it's the provenance of green energy. Uh -huh. So we're tracking that provenance. And we really don't, don't just see this as energy tag metadata, mm -hmm. but we, we're bringing in other attributes. So the specific granular certificate that uh -huh. we're looking at is uh -huh. the time-based energy attribute mm -hmm. certificate. Mm -hmm. So to get into the word kind of acronyms, right? Uh -huh. the, those time-based energy attribute certificates roll up into aggregate proofs that then become this inventory that can be used downstream. Of course, yeah. And, and that's, that's where we want to see corporate off-takers um, use that. And they use that based on time and geography. So they mm -hmm. can't use a time-based energy certificate some, sometime, let's say, out of a six-hour band or out of a three-hour band. I'm not sure what the criteria is for that. And there's working groups uh, we, that we have for that. Uh, you know, if it's going to be, be using, one for one. It's gonna be, uh, well, in terms of the time band, it has to be 60 minutes or less, and, and ideally, Whatever, Within five same, minutes, right? Same, like, same or even less, right? Yeah. Because uh, yeah, and I think that point about provenance is key because at the end of the day, if we have a basic commodity product like hydrogen that is eventually going to go into something like green steel, uh, if, I've, if I've burned coal... Uh, and then use some dodgy accounting or some tricky accounting to produce green hydrogen, then what I'm calling green steel is actually uh, an environmental disaster. Yeah. So like it's all along the chain, right from the very first point to the point where that steel is used in that bridge, we need to make sure that it's really green. Um, so we, we call that the kind of custody uh, trust, right? What's, what's, uh -huh. the, what's your custody of that asset yeah. uh, from, from cradle to grave, uh, eventually? Cradle we, to grave. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or, or, or cradle to cradle. That is the same. <laughs> No, but so, I, yeah, it's it's so important. No, but gentlemen, I mean, I can already hear we only have half an hour. We already passed it half an hour so oh, yeah. quickly. And <laughs> I think what what's the most important point that we just touched upon is the importance of uh, transparency that we're creating yeah. in this market. And the Energy Tech Foundation is setting a standard for that. And the product that you've created with Sunified is basically creating a, a, a layer of trust on the machine level. And it's right. not only creating a layer of trust for the GOOs, but also for any other sort of data on a, on a much higher frequency. So you can already see how these various uh, yeah, levels of the, of the ecosystem come together. Uh -huh. And also for the viewers at home, we just had a podcast recorded about orchestrating the energy transition. And within that podcast, we already discussed how basically companies and, and we call it energy leaders mm. take the take the take the first step in creating this level of transparency that we need. And then you already mentioned how you hope that legislators will take over and, and, and take these take these developments and innovations uh -huh, as uh -huh. a basis for new laws because we really need new laws. So if you haven't seen the other podcast orchestrating the energy transition, please do have a look at that podcast as well as it's, yeah, this very much complements mm -hmm. that what we've seen over there. Um, Leon, thank you very much for your time. Thanks, I mean, David. I'm very sure we could talk for many more well, hours, we but I'm sure we'll have to. We're, we're, we're trying to make this happen in physical reality. So we, we're here in the Green, green Village, right, we're at TUD. Delph. Port of Rotterdam is also where we have our field trial. So we, we want to expose these APIs and, and get Energy Tag operating here at, at, at the Green Village. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to happen uh, right. sometime. And also, Kilian, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. To everybody, thank you very much for watching. You. If you haven't subscribed yet, please don't forget to subscribe. Also, don't forget to give this video a like if you really liked it. And also, don't forget to hit the bell button so you're always the first to know about these new podcasts. Well, and I'm well, sure many energy more tag on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tag, 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 tag us everywhere. Right? Yeah. <laughs> we got to tag everyone. Tag those electrons. <laughs> hey, okay. both of you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Yeah, it is really fun. Thank you. That was it for today's podcast. Thank you for listening in and please subscribe so you don't miss out on our upcoming episodes. If you want to get in touch with us, you can find our contact details at www.twotokens.org.